For I will consider my cat Joffrey, for he is the servant of the living God, duly and daily serving him. Christopher Smart was an 18th century English poet best known for his poem, Jubilati Agno. Jubilati Agno, which means rejoice in the lamb in Latin, is a deeply religious poem written while Smart was being kept at a mental hospital. There are differing opinions about his mental condition. It was expressed in his constant praying in public places. He would get down on his knees in the middle of the street and start praying and praising God, often soliciting those around him to join in. His good friend, the eminent Samuel Johnson, had this to say about Smart's supposed madness. Madness frequently discovers itself merely by unnecessary deviation from the usual mode of the world. My poor friend Smart showed the disturbance of his mind by falling upon his knees and saying his prayers in the street or in any other unusual place. Now although, rationally speaking, it is greater madness not to pray at all than to pray as Smart did, I am afraid there are so many who do not pray that their understanding is not called in question. Nowadays we mostly remember Smart for the lines he wrote about his cat Joffrey, who was his sole companion for much of the time he was confined. In considering his cat Joffrey, he does so in a theologically rich and simultaneously whimsical manner. First, he describes Joffrey's vertical relationship to the living God. For at the first glance of the glory of God in the East, he worships in his way. For this is done by wreathing his body seven times round with elegant quickness. After performing his daily matins, Joffrey turns his attention inwards towards himself. The Israelites received ten commandments that articulated their responsibilities towards God and towards each other. Joffrey, by contrast, has ten ways of looking after himself. For this he performs in ten degrees. For first, he looks upon his forepaws to see if they are clean. For secondly, he kicks up behind to clear away there. For thirdly, he works it upon stretch with the forepaws extended. For fourthly, he sharpens his paws by wood. For fifthly, he washes himself. For sixthly, he rolls upon wash. For seventhly, he flees himself that he may not be interrupted upon the beat. For eighthly, he rubs himself against a post. For ninthly, he looks up for his instructions. For tenthly, he goes in quest of food. It's only after he's taken care of himself in all these ways that Joffrey deigns to cast his attentions on his fellow creatures. For having considered God and himself, he will consider his neighbor. For if he meets another cat, he will kiss her in kindness. We see Joffrey's good breeding and pleasant disposition in how he greets the other cat. He further demonstrates his magnanimity in his very scrupulous sense of fair play. For when he takes his prey, he plays with it to give it a chance. For one mouse in seven escapes by his dallying. Just as God designated one day out of the week for rest and sacred observance, Joffrey allows one mouse out of every seven to escape his grasp. But Joffrey is not all-powerful, and he's sometimes to be pitied, such as when he gets himself into a bad scrape. For he is of the Lord's poor, and so indeed is he called by benevolence perpetually. Poor Joffrey, poor Joffrey, the rat has bit thy throat. We know we're supposed to take special care of the poor, and that the poor shall inherit the earth. Joffrey is of the Lord's poor, as demonstrated when we call him very pitifully. Poor Joffrey, poor Joffrey. But we thank God that he's recovered from his injuries. For I bless the name of the Lord Jesus that Joffrey is better. You may not like cats all that much because you think they don't listen, but that has more to do with you than the cat. For he is docile and can learn certain things. For he can set up with gravity, which is patience upon approbation. For he can fetch and carry, which is patience in employment. For he can jump over a stick, which is patience upon proof positive. For he can spraggle upon waggle at the word of command. For he can jump from an eminence into his master's bosom. For he can catch the cork and toss it again. In every way, Joffrey shows himself to be favored by God. 
He is a writer's best companion, for he is good to think on if a man would express himself neatly. And studying his movements is a spiritual meditation, for God has blessed him in the variety of his movements, for though he cannot fly, he is an excellent clamberer, for his motions upon the face of the earth are more than any other quadruped, for he can tread to all the measures upon the music, for he can swim for life, for he can creep.